guys, it's Olivia and welcome back to Live in Literature. I'm so excited to be here with you today. In this video, I thought I would talk about books I am most excited to read in 2021. Now these are books that have not been published yet, but will be published very soon within the year. And some of these are connected to series, some of these are just like standalones that I'm super excited to read. But I thought that you guys might be interested to know what I'm going to be reading this year and some of the ones I'm really excited for. So let's get into it. So I'm going to start off with a, a couple from series that I love, like a couple of books that are going to be like I'm either tying off a series or included in a series that I definitely want to talk about. So the ones that are coming up really soon is um, actually one that that's this month that I'm super excited for. And it's called A Vow So Bold and Deadly. And I'll put it right here. Hi, it goes right here. And there are two books in this series, actually. So here's book one, A Curse So Dark and Lonely. And here's book two, A Heart So Fierce and Broken. And this is part of a series by uh, Bridget Kemmer, or Kemmerer. I don't know if I'm ever saying her name right. I feel really bad. But she's a new author that I found pretty recently, like last year. I think I actually discovered this book last January. And she is definitely more of a YA author. She definitely writes for a, I would say probably a younger audience, for, probably for between the ages of like 14 to like 18 years old. But I'll be honest, I love her books. I love this series. It is such a good series. And the book that's coming out, about So Bold and Deadly, will be um, coming out January 26th. And I'm so excited to read it. Reasons why I'm excited to read about So Bold and Deadly are that it's the concluding book in this series. It's going to be, it's a trilogy. And it is just tying together all the loose ends from the original. So if you want me to do a full review of Bridget Kemmer's about or uh, A Curse So Dark and Lonely series. I would love to do that. I would love to talk more about her book. But I guess I'll give you a brief plot summary of what the book is about. It's a modern retelling of Beauty and the Beast, but also in a fantasy world. I hope that makes any sense. I'll be honest, Beauty and the Beast retellings are getting a little bit old. But she is being <laughs> Because I feel like they're coming up so often. But this one is really special. And I'll be honest, usually I don't like when they when things take place in the modern world. I think that like it just kind of ruins the fantasy aspect. But the way that she does it makes it really classy. And she's able to like make it not seem so weird that a couple of her characters are from a modern world and then brought into this fantasy world. And I think that's really special because not, not a lot of people can do that as seamlessly as um, as she can. And so the book is about a girl named Harper who gets to basically taken to this fantasy world where there is a beast that is attacking, this large beast that is attacking um, its people. And basically to break the curse, uh, Ren, the prince, has to fall in love with this girl within a year or else, um, I guess, or else, or else the curse starts over and usually the girls die. She's really good. Basically the book is very, I think it's really well written. I think that it's definitely a book that you want to, like, I remember I was in a reading slump earlier, like in 2020, when I was reading, like, I was still trying to dip my toes into new adult, but sometimes like the jargon and the wording can be like kind of a lot for me. And so like, I was like, mm, I just want like an easy, like fun read. And this was that book series for me. And it actually turned out like to be really really good really good i was expecting it to be kind of lame like i read the titles and the plot and stuff and i'm like i don't know this sounds like every other story but i actually really enjoy it and i think it's really good i read the second one and the second one is amazing the second one's my favorite versus the first but i think it's great and i'm so excited for a vow so bold and deadly though so i can't wait all right next one another book that i'm super excited that is coming out very soon is a court of silver flames by sarah j moss and of course as you know i am <laughs> I love her. And A Court of Silver Flames is her spinoff novel from the Akatar series. And um, if you don't know what Akatar is, it's A Court of Thorns and Roses is her like trilogy that she made. And, and so this book takes place, it's not part of the trilogy, but it's out it's within the universe. And it's about the two characters, Nesta and Cassian. And if you haven't read Akatar, you need to read it immediately. It is amazing. But this book has been long anticipated we I at least those of us who are in the fandom or like enjoy Sarah J Moss have been waiting for this book forever and I forever 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 I am so excited because I know there's gonna be a lot of vibes a little sexual tension you know what I'm saying and it's good stuff Basically, um, if you wanted like a quick plot summary, it's about two of the characters within the Akatar universe, Nesta and Cassian. And it's basically about 
who Nesta is as a person and what she's overcoming in this book and how her relationship with Cassian is affected by that and how they grow together. And I'm really excited to see more of Cassian because like Cassian, loves him. he's my boy. I love him so much. Like he's the best. So Cassian's great. Nesta is interesting. And those of you who are part of the Akatar universe have your own opinions about Nesta. Currently, I'm in the negative column. I don't love her as a person, but I'm hoping that this book will change my mind. And I'm always open-minded to like see. I love redemption arcs and people's second chances. Oh, why am I so bad at being good? Like, I just think it's really important. So we'll see how Nesta does, but I'm excited for it. The next book I want to talk about is Gods and Monsters by Shelby Mahurin. And Shelby Mahurin is a new author, once again, that I discovered in like 2019 uh like early 20 like early 2019 and then in 2020 when she came out with her book Serpent and Dove and if you haven't read Shelby Mahurin you need to immediately she is so incredibly talented and I loved her book Serpent and Dove was very very good I'll be honest I'm part of the grouping that doesn't I didn't love Blood and Honey which was her second one you're a monster I'd love to do a video about why I didn't love her second book more on a later date if you would like to see that but if not um it just wasn't my favorite and I can explain later why but basically her third book is coming out, Gods and Monsters. It's part of this trilogy, um, the Serpent and Dove trilogy. And I am so excited for it because it's going to be concluding the series. It is definitely a book to look out for and a book to add to your TBR. But a quick plot summary for you about what Serpent and Dove is about and what the series is about. Essentially, it's about um, a witch named Lou who is living essentially like in hiding from her mother. And she ends up having to marry a uh, Chaucer which is um, essentially the like French, it's like French police who are in charge of like killing witches and they're part of like the church of like this world that they've created. And she ends up having to marry one. Because I don't trust your judgments. Excuse me? Who married the man she just met? It's true love! Whoa! And these two, Reed is his name, Reed and Lou, end up getting paired together. And as the story progresses, their relationship progresses. Country boy, I love you. Take that out with what you will. But this story is really interesting. I think it's such a cool world that she's built for them. And this third book is going to be very good. So add it to your TBR. It should be coming out in August or September of this year. Okay. In the next little bit, I'm going to be talking about books that don't really aren't correlated with any series. And they're not really attached to anything. These are just like kind of standalone books that I'm really excited for. And I hope you'll be excited for them too. So this book is called Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. Six Crimson Cranes is about a princess in exile who is forced into an arranged marriage and then somehow that arranged marriage gets blown up because of some undiscovered magic that gets released and at first she's relieved but then her um mother-in-law ends up being like a dark witch who essentially turns her her six brothers into cranes and the princess is then um i don't actually know what her name is but the princess is then forced to basically break the curse without telling anybody and with the loss of her voice and her power she has to like go on this journey and I just thought it was so interesting. This is all inspired by um, the wild swan, which is an Asian folklore and myth. Because I feel like we get a lot of the same, like, let's be real, like we have our YA protagonist who lives in a kingdom, like that's pretty freaking normal, like in the forest, you know? I think it's really interesting when books take place in places that you're not expecting and places that are interesting that you don't know very much about. And so I find Asian uh, culture and um, ancestry really interesting. I think it sounds like a plot I've never heard before and I cannot wait to read it. Next book that I'm very excited to read this year is the is called The Songbook of Benny Lament. And this is by Amy Harmon, who I have talked about previously in my last video, who I love and adore. But this book is going to be so beautiful. Essentially, it's kind of like these two, um, this guy who is in a gang and writes songs and this woman that he discovers who sings his songs of him like getting out of uh, crime and how she like brings him out of it and it's supposed to be a very like tragic love story and I think it will be really beautiful and really interesting I'll be honest though I would read Amy Harmon's grocery list I think that she's like such a wordsmith and so good at like coming up with good like ways to write about love and ways to write about people and so I know that this book is going to be a knockout and she is going to kill it and I cannot wait to read it it comes out in March so everyone save your dates and read the book I'm telling you you will not regret it it's gonna be amazing the last book I'd like to talk to you guys today about is called Defy the Night by Bridget Kemmer. And this is one that doesn't have a, um, a cover yet because it's a new one. And like I mentioned before, Bridget Kemmer does write the uh, Curse of Dark and Lonely series. And her book, Vows of Wolves and Deadly, is coming out in January. 
but it turns out she has another book coming out in September and I'm like wow you are just like a rock star so yeah. you're just like dishing books out left and right and this one is going to be a totally and completely separate fantasy and different from the last one that she did and it's supposed to be about a corrupt kingdom and a sickness that is going through the going through the city there's a prince trying to hold it all together and a princess who will stop at nothing to try to bring this kingdom to its knees and so I think it sounds really interesting I think like it's really interesting when they involve like I don't know why I just think that like sickness related problems like within a kingdom are very relevant to today yeah weird Hmm, I wonder why. And so I think it's really interesting how they go about solving those kinds of things. And this one should be very interesting. And of course, I think that she up Richard uh, Kemmer, I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep screwing up her name. <laughs> Uh, that she is a really talented author. I'm really excited to see what, it, what it's like in September. I hope that it's good and I cannot wait to read it. So I'll support her any day of the week. I think that everyone should go read her books. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed knowing what my 2021 TBR list is going to look like and what books I'm going to be reading this year. I hope that you guys will share with me what your TBR list and other books that you're looking forward to in 2021 is and that you'll comment them down below in the comment section. I'd love to know what you guys are reading so that I can read it too and that I can like get in with the fandoms that are new and starting and I'm very excited for this year. I think that this year is going to be a good book year. I think there are a lot of interesting trends that are coming into play and I think that everyone has such interesting stories to tell and I'm really excited. I think it's going to be really really fun. If you would like to keep following me on my booktuber journey, please subscribe below, click the red button, and please add comments in the comment section, things you would like to know, things you want me to read, things that I should share with you guys. So please comment down below. But thank you guys so much for following and supporting me. I'm super appreciative, and I hope you guys have a great day. See you next time. Bye.